Hi everyone! First, thanks to Change the Game Conference for inviting me. My name is Véronique Richard and today we will discuss um, how can we ignite the creative potential through movement. So, the idea came to me because I think we still see too much of these type of movement that you see on your screen. Super linear, prescriptive movement activity and not that it is wrong, don't get me wrong, there's many benefit to those movement activity. It's good for the health, it's also good for the mind, but I was wondering if there could be more to achieve through movement activity. Actually, I was wondering, or I am wondering, I should say, what could be the impact of moving more freely, moving in non-linear way, being able to just spontaneously follow your movement or body instinct, if there would be more spaces or more activity like that? What could be the impact? And I got curious in the impact of those type of free or what we call also enriched movement activity on igniting the creative potential. So let's start by explaining what is the creative potential. We often see creativity as a cognitive skills, a way of thinking in original and flexible ways. Not that this is not true, it's a part of what creativity is, but to become more creative, it's much more complex and dynamic than only a way of thinking. So by reviewing the literature, I developed that model that you see on your screen, which represent uh, what is the creative potential system and how it can help someone to behave more creatively. So as you see, there is two strands that are interacting together. So creativity emerge from the interaction between, yes, some individual characteristic, but also from the environment in which an individual will just be. So what are those different elements? First, if we start by the individual element, yes, if someone is more flexible, persistent, able to take perspective over different situations, it's going to help uh, the creative potential to grow. But there's also effective attributes or state, uh, being open-minded, being intrinsically motivated, willing to take risk and being tolerant to discomfort. And finally, there's also some physical expression that are associated with creativity. What about the environment now? The gray strand, if you see it as kind of a twisted image, um, there's also different environmental element that we should consider. So first, what are the values of your environment? Is it encouraging freedom, autonomy, risk? Um, how are the social interactions in your environment? Is it based on trust, vulnerability, and connectivity between the people? And finally, how do you set up your environment? Is it a super uh, straightforward environment or there's place for material and object to be set in a non-intuitive way? So when those environment and the individual are connected together, then the perception of what we call affordances, which is the possibility for action, will allow more creative action to emerge. I'm sure you're wondering now, okay, so where does movement fit in all this? My question is actually this one. So if we move differently, if we allow our body to move more creatively, could we ignite some of those individual characteristics? So first thing, before even to get to that question, if the environment matters so much for creativity to emerge, then we first need to set a specific type of environment. Specifically, I like to call it a risk-friendly environment. So when you set an environment to uh, implement those movement activity, you need to think of two 
major factor, creating a messy environment, but also a supportive one. What does it mean? Does your environment um, is composed of various constraints? Is there a lot of ver variability, problem solving, novelty, uncontrollability, ambiguity, unpredictability, and spontaneity? These are just key words for you to get inspired to create little chaos in your environment. Yet, you cannot create chaos or a messy environment and not support individuals. So you also need to make sure that in your behavior or the behavior of the leaders of your group, uh, everyone encourage the differences and the originality. We support mistake or perceived failure. Uh, we encourage autonomy and acceptance of how people will behave in this environment. So if you create that balance, then you have a risk-friendly environment and you are ready to ignite the creative potential. So to explain to you what I mean by creating enriched movement activity and what it can create, let's take an example. Let's simply take walking pattern. We all walk every day. I'm sure you agree with that. And we walk in our really specific way. But let's say that we take a bunch of people in a group and we are like, okay, let's walk away from the obvious and let's just walk differently. Uh, one activity that I always do is that I ask people to walk like if their body was made of different substance. So how would you walk if your body was made of water or sand or wood or oil? All these different substances will make your body move differently and you will explore other ways to perform a motor pattern walking that you do every day, but now we are reconsidering it. So by setting first an environment and then allowing people to explore different ways to walk, how can that influence the individual uh, element that I described earlier? So here's a model that I've developed and that we think could help people think differently about how they create their movement activity. So you recognize the creative potential system. And the first thing you have to do is to make sure that you know the people that are arriving with you. So let's take, because it's quite common, let's take a group of quite rigid close-minded yet motivated individual. So this group is in front of you and um, we start the walking away from the obvious activity, which I also like to call it movement improv. I have different activities, but let's take this one. There's always two rules to the movement improv. First rule, leave your judgment at the door. Second rule, there's no other rule you answer the movement stimulus here walking with substance in any way you want. I don't know if, if there's a right or wrong. I don't know what's the perfect answer. So you do you. So this is where uh, we kind of disrupt or challenge the system. This is where we want this to get messy and we are quite proud of getting messy. I've been doing this activity many times and you know, it's always quite the same process. You see here that I've put a time scale and usually at the beginning, people are just uncertain of what to do um, because they are free, because there's this constraint to move with different substance, uh, people will tend to perceived the affordances, which you see here at the beginning, the possibility of, of action quite differently. Now they can do whatever they want. In terms of behavior, if you look in the middle here, the first few seconds are what I would call a little, a little awkward. So people are still walking in 
biped walking pattern like human walking style and people are, are observing each other like laughing a little shy i would say hesitating and slowly if you follow um uh, the gray strand here at some point after maybe a minute or two someone will try something that is a bit different um maybe someone will go on the floor or start rolling or start walking like a baby who said that walking was a human walk so by doing this this person start uh exploring different movement behavior and now we start seeing in this person some div diverse walking pattern emerge of course other people around observe and that gave kind of a permission for other to do the same and because no one laugh at this first person the interpersonal trust in the group increase and this of course is not just after one movement improvisation activity it's maybe after one hour that you start feeling the trust emerge and you start feeling also that people are exploring strategies in order to navigate the different movement activity and this is where we think that not only there was some willingness to take risk but now we start feeling people are a little bit more flexible and because the people are a little bit more flexible they are a little bit more open and by the end of two hours activity and if i get the chance to see uh, the people multiple time in multiple session now we start seeing that hey freedom as a new norm of the group is integrated and because of that there is a complete engagement of uh, the people in the movement activity but also you start seeing flexible and original movement if we summarize all this actually first thing always assess the initial state of the system of the group have a goal in mind what do you want to uh, send as a message for me it's like walking away from the obvious let's try to kind of move away from this like it has already always been done this way then set the environment make sure that the rules that you are instructing your group are allowing a lot of exploration make sure also that even the material space are allowing this then you give participant freedom to explore. You don't say anything. The biggest task when we do these type of enriched movement activity, it's, it's actually not the during the activity, it's the before, the planning, the thinking about how you will constrain, uh, how you will just guide people without actually correcting them. Uh, and then you observe during during the session you just observe what are the responses what are the interaction what seems to be the strategy to maybe navigate discomfort to maybe try to find new solution and then you debrief it's super important that after each of those enriched movement activity you sit with your people and you just talk about how did they feel what were they thinking during the activity what were their strategies? Um, how did they succeed to finally reorganize and navigate quite uh, optimally the activity? So if you do this, uh, we have more chances to not only keep people healthy, but also help them optimize their creative potential. Because yes, everyone has creative potential. So here's my invitation to you. Just try to transform one prescriptive movement activity into a more creative one. Use those constraints, the variety, use the freedom, the autonomy. Put a little bit of uncontrollability, ambiguity into your activities and just observe how the system shape from that of course one activity today i had a really really short time i just try to explain you 
one activity, but you can create so many different activities with those principles that not only are making people move, but also optimize uh, themselves. And why should you do that? Well, I like Csikszentmihalyi quote here, which says, unless enough people are motivated by the enjoyment that comes from confronting challenges by discovering new ways of being and doing, there's no evolution of culture, no progress in thoughts or feeling. People might resist at the beginning. They make my, make you the look like rolling their eyes or things like that. But I really think that sport and exercise uh, is ready for that change. And I hope you will be one of the leader of this change by creating more or designing more uh, enriched movement activity. On that note, merci beaucoup. And if you have any question, please feel free to reach me at, the, at this email address. Thank you.